Welcome, welcome back. It's part two of part two. This is the dark truths about the atheist mind. Um, I'm, hold on. So I'm not completely enjoying this. There, I feel like I'm debating it more. But, you know, it is what it is. You're not going to get along with every video, but I'm, I'm listening. So before we get started, there's a thanks button. You can donate to the channel. You don't have to. Ow. You can subscribe. And if you don't want to do that, give me a thumbs up. Ow. And um, all, all the requirements, requirements, requests, video. And say, so what if we... I'm going to go back a little bit. Atheists might be dismissive and say, so what if we have natural intuitions about God? Such intuitions are merely the byproducts of evolution and therefore have no basis in reality. But the atheists making this argument should quickly realize their mistake. According to them, all our intuitions must be the products of evolution. So applying their same logic, None of our intuitions have a basis in reality. But to put it very bluntly, that's insane. I don't understand what he just said. Because in addition to intuitions about God, we're born with intuitions about logic, math, counting, ethics, and even intuitions about the nature of space and time. So according to atheists, all of these intuitions are just a product of blind evolution, which would mean none of them have a basis in reality, which would mean none of them can be trusted, which would mean the human mind itself can't be trusted. Okay, I'm not quite sure what his point is here, other than to say that when you're, when the first people were born, they weren't given watches, they weren't given calendars, those were invented by people. We all understand that, that time has always existed and always will, but we had to put together things so that we could have a time. We could, we could adjust to it and accept time on a pattern where you could have a watch and you knew what certain hour it was. And blah, blah. So I don't quite understand what he's saying because we all understand that concept of, of time in that aspect, but he's saying atheists don't. I'm, I'm completely lost as to what his point is on this one. So I'm disagreeing with him, I think. The atheist might respond to this by saying that, unlike intuitions about God, those other intuitions, like logical, empirical, and ethical intuitions, are established on solid, rational grounds. Well, let's just test that. A basic ethical intuition that all humans share is harming others for no reason is wrong. Atheists endorse this belief, but why? Imagine someone who questions this. Imagine someone who says there is no scientific or rational evidence proving that harming others is I'm going to go back. I didn't understand what he just said. Sorry all humans share is harming others for no reason is wrong atheists endorse this belief atheists believe that harming people is bad i thought that was shared with by everyone harming people is bad you don't want to be harmed so i don't want to be harmed so why is that a mindset that an atheist but that's everyone I don't want to be walking down the street and have somebody just punch me, nor would I want to walk down the street and punch someone. There's also ramifications for that. He, he's lost me completely here. Atheists think that. No one else does. What the hell are you talking about, man? Maybe I'm hungry. But why? Imagine someone who questions this. Imagine someone who says, there is no scientific or rational evidence proving that harming others is wrong. Only brainwashed nuts would believe that harming others is wrong. Such myths are nothing more than the byproducts of evolution. Or imagine someone else denying... Okay, that last argument was pointless. 
logical intuitions like the law of non-contradiction, which is the logical principle that no two contradictory statements can be simultaneously true. Imagine someone saying, there is no empirical basis to this so-called law of non-contradiction. Can you see the law of non-contradiction with a microscope? Can you detect it in a laboratory? Such a law can only be accepted on blind faith. What could the atheist say to such skeptics? What empirical facts would prove that harming others is wrong or that the law of non-contradiction is true? All the atheist could say is that these fundamental beliefs just are or we have to accept them axiomatically. Or I have no idea what the hell he's saying right now or the point of any of this. I, I'm the past three minutes has been word salad for me. I don't understand his point. Can somebody please tell me? Maybe I've just built up listening to the last video in this video to where I just feel some kind of hostility towards the man, but he's not. I don't understand him at all right now. Sorry. Or the beliefs are valid because they agree with our intuitions or these are things we all just know. But all of these things could also be said about the natural intuitiveness of God. So by trashing intuitions about God, the atheist also has to trash intuitions about everything else, including logical, empirical, and ethical intuitions, which are at the foundation of science, math, and secular ethics. Atheism thus becomes a self-defeating proposition. Can you be a good person without believing? The last, I apologize for the last four minutes. None of that made sense. Believing in God? Atheists often claim that their atheism is not a set of beliefs. Rather, atheism is a mode of thinking, namely scientific and analytic thinking. The analytic mind realizes that there is no scientific evidence for God, therefore belief in God is irrational. Atheists say that such reasoning about God has nothing to do with morality. In reality, however, this- I know atheists or people who are atheists who only believe that there is no God, there's an absence of God because of all of the terrible things that people do to each other on this planet. And why would a God who loves you allow that to happen that's some of them not all of them i know others who think it can't be proven scientifically it can't be this scientifically or this uh, every they don't all have the same they're not in the same hive so you cannot point to and say they all believe this because they're all different people are different people believe different things people have different religious beliefs people have different spiritual beliefs i'm not religious shocker i'm not religious but i do believe there's something but that doesn't mean that i'm close-minded enough to to say that and and my opinion has changed over time but i i feel like everyone is capable of change but there's also something inside where you have to want it. I was completely against things, but I'm, I opened up my eyes to, to allow things to make sense. But I feel like he's stereotyping and being negative about it. Like, oh, okay, well, you're just, and it's like, dude, you're talking down to people. That's what I feel like he's doing. And it's making me really not like him because he's coming across as I'm better than you because maybe that's why I don't like him. Maybe that's why I'm not like, I'm not feeling this because I know a lot of people, like, as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm not spiritual. I'm not, I'm not religious. I do believe there's something, but I feel like he's talking down to me. It's like, dude, I, I, come on now. That's just how I'm feeling right now analytic thinking promoted by atheism has everything to do with morality. To understand this, we need to define two contrasting modes of thought. Analytic thinking versus intuitive thinking. Our default mode of cognition is intuitive. 
intuitive thinking is automatic and it's driven by deep psychological mechanisms we are born with. When a person feels that he should help his ill mother, that's an intuitive mode of thinking. When a sailor lost at sea... I think that some of this intuitive is also um, inherited through your upbringing. You want to help a sick mother. Okay. You probably would want to help your sick mother if your mother was good. Your mother was always there for you. If you had a terrible mom and your mom came down sick and you're just thinking about all the terrible things that she did to you, eh, you probably wouldn't want to help. So it's also how you were raised is also very important to how you are. Does that make sense? Calls to God to save him, that's also intuitive thinking, grounded in the universal intuition that God exists. I just, this is completely unrelated, but um, he just said something about, you know, being on a boat and asking God to help you. There's this joke, and this is unrelated, but there's this joke, and I'm, I, I'm sure some of you have heard it were heard a variation of it hold on i'm drinking mango peach green tea mixed with regular tea iced tea it's pretty good so anyways this joke is and the variation that i've heard is there's a guy on a boat and He's stranded, and he, uh, how does it go? He's stranded, and, uh, oh, he's praying to a God, save me. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. Please save me. I don't, I don't want to die, and he, uh, His, his maybe his boat has a hole under something like that and um, I'm gonna butcher this joke because now it's just disappearing but anyways um, he's he's like bailing water and he comes across like something in the water like some duct tape or something like that and he's like oh well this isn't gonna help me and then he's continuing to pray and then he comes uh, he comes across like a uh, uh, like a life preserver. He finds a life preserver and like a little uh, floating vest or so, you know something like that. And he's like, well, this isn't going to help me. And then he comes across and he sees a, an empty boat. And it, you know he's like, well, that's not going to help me. And then he ends up like dying. He drowns eventually. And he gets to heaven. And I apologize for butchering this, but he gets to heaven and he sees God. And he goes, I was praying to you. Why didn't you save me? And God's like, what are you talking about? I sent duct tape to fix your boat. You didn't want that. I sent, you know, the life jacket so you wouldn't drown. You didn't want that. I sent another boat. And you didn't want that. You know, it was just, it's, and I apologize. I butchered that joke, but it's, it was just kind of funny how, you know, you're, you're asking for things, but what you think you're asking for, you're not getting, but you are getting help. But you're just not getting the help that you are thinking about. You're, you know, you're anticipating a boat coming by with, people and food and instead you're getting all these other things that are going to get you by all you got to do is just no you know it was i i butchered the joke i completely butchered the joke and i apologize for that to everyone with ears but it's a very funny joke back to the video i'm sorry analytic thinking in contrast is not automatic or easy Analytic thinking requires concentration. It's used to solve complex problems and analyze situations. Analytic thinking is used not only in science and academia, but it's also the mode of thought used for criticism and argumentation. Numerous studies show that when you disrupt people's concentration with loud noises, time constraints, or other distractions, they fall back to intuitive thinking. This is why there are no atheists in a foxhole. When distracted by the horrors of war and the imminence of death, analytic thinking shuts off and the intuitive mind takes over. Normally our thinking is a blend of both intuitive and analytic modes, but sometimes the two modes can conflict. In those conflicts, analytic thought can be used to gut intuitions. 
This is what we see with atheism. The atheist tells us that analytic thought is the only way to understand the world and the only way to arrive at truths, whereas intuitions are nothing but bias. But recent cognitive science and psychological studies have shown that overdeveloping the analytic parts of our cognitive faculties can greatly diminish not only our religious intuitions, but also moral intuitions. World-renowned psychologists and researchers like Jonathan Haidt and Joseph Heinrich explain that high analytical thought is correlated with less of what's called deontological morality. Morality generally falls under two categories, consequentialist versus deontological. Consequentialist morality focuses on consequences and calculating how to maximize pleasure and reduce harm for the most number of people. This makes consequentialist morality very analytic in nature. Deontological morality, however, is much more intuitive and relies on gut feelings and innate ethical tendencies such as caring for family, feelings of disgust or reverence, respect for authority, and loyalty to one's tribe. To better understand the contrast between consequentialist and deontological morality, consider this scenario. A man goes to the supermarket once a week and buys a dead chicken. But before cooking the chicken, he has sexual intercourse with it. Then he thoroughly cooks it and eats it. Is there anything morally wrong with his actions? Yeah, it's nasty. Purely on the basis of consequentialist morality, there would be nothing wrong with this since there's no harm, and in fact the man increases his overall pleasure, so it might even be an ethically good action. But deontological intuitions tell us that such an act is perverse, it's disrespectful, it violates decency, and therefore is highly immoral. The surprising thing is that when people are asked about this chicken scenario, those who have a Western secular education are far more likely to find nothing objectionable to it. What act a Western education? So, so he's trying to say that the Western people are just like, yeah, thumbs up, that's awesome. Come on, man. Now you're just picking and choosing who you want to target. You're targeting me. You're saying that I'm cool with that. Shut up. Shut your mouth. Academics now recognize is that when the analytic side of cognition is inflated, Due to education, upbringing, and environment, deontological intuitions become muted, if not entirely cancelled out. This overemphasis on analytic thinking is exactly what atheist psychology is all about. And if you. So, atheist psychology is let's have sex with the chicken that's dead and then we're gonna cook it up? Right asked, you might be surprised that many atheists would find nothing wrong with copulating with a dead chicken. I don't know any atheist that would agree with you because that's nasty. And then eating it. It's not a coincidence that many popular atheists have openly stated that they have no moral objections to incest, bestiality, necrophilia, and other so-called victimless crimes. You gotta cite some sources because I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You're just making shit up now. That most people of the world would consider unspeakably evil. I think you're trying to negatively attach things like having sex with a dead chicken and then cooking it and eating it with atheism as though to just negatively, again, paint all of them with a broad brush. Saying they're cool with bestiality and incest and all that. Really? Really, dude? Seriously? I think you're trying too hard. There's, I gotta say, there's nothing genius about what you're saying right now. You just sound like an asshole. And I completely disagree with you. I don't know anyone, anyone alive that would say, eh, I just bought this chicken, I banged it, then I cooked it and ate it. In what world would anyone go, that's awesome, dude. Awesome. That's great for you, man. Did you season it? Did you season it up? No, no one would say that. But now he's saying people with the Western mind. I gotta say, I'm not looking forward to episode three because I think this guy's a douchebag. And I think he's just trying to say that atheists equal people who are 
agree with with doing things like bestiality and having sex with dead chickens come on man you're a fool you're a fool even Richard Dawkins recently claimed that there's I don't give a shit about what Richard Dawkins Richard Dawkins doesn't speak for all atheists I'm not an atheist and I'm annoyed with this guy just because one per one person says if okay if we're gonna paint everyone with a broad brush then can I say that every Muslim would be negative because of Osama bin Laden that's a completely asinine statement to make isn't it of course it is absolutely stupid but that's what he's doing see what I'm saying it's completely stupid you can't do that this guy's annoying me there's nothing morally problematic about eating human flesh so long as the meat has been cultivated using human clones in a lab again Richard Dawkins apparently is batshit insane, but that doesn't mean every single other person who is shares the same atheist mind as him is going to go along with it. I don't know anyone who would say, you know what, I just banged a chicken and I cooked it. Now I'm wondering what human meat tastes like. Shut your mouth. What we must realize is that healthy human relations are fundamentally deontological. For example, a woman could greatly I wonder if that was human flavored ice cream. I'm joking. ...increase her physical pleasure if she cheated on her husband without him ever finding out. But she doesn't do that because that would be unfaithful and infidelity is morally wrong regardless of any positive overall consequences. But let me guess, an atheist would do it because... A son might have a lot to gain by frequently lying to his father but he doesn't do that because lying, especially when directed to one's parents, is morally wrong, regardless of the upside. A mother could greatly enjoy life if she gave up her baby to a foster family, but she doesn't do that because her strong maternal intuitions tell her not to abandon her child, regardless of the massive increase in freedom she could enjoy. All relationships require a healthy sense of deontological intuition, but this is precisely what a hyperactive analytic psychology destroys. The analytic mind favors consequentialism, and consequentialism says the only thing that matters is maximizing pleasure and personal happiness, basically pumping dopamine into the brain. But sometimes maximizing that dopamine requires lying, cheating, cutting off family, betraying your community, violating sanctity, engaging in the taboo. So when a it also comes from reading a book, doing good things, going for a walk, enjoying time with your your loved one, your your pets, playing video games. It doesn't always have to be negative. atheists promote analytic thought as the end-all be-all of human cognition, they're not only burying natural human intuitions about God, they're also sabotaging all organic human relationships. Psychologist Jonathan Haidt, who is a committed atheist himself, as well as others, have published numerous studies on how atheists are less charitable, less generous to family, less loyal to community, more willing to justify lying and cheating for material gain, more willing to engage in infidelity, and much more. No, they're just shit people. You don't have to be an atheist. I know some religious people who are shit people. There are shit human beings on this planet. You don't have to label them an atheist. I'm sure there are some Muslims out there who are some shit people too. There are Christians who are shit people. Jewish people who are shit people. Whatever the hell I would be are, could, could be some shit people. There are shit people in every group, in every section, in every brr, 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 around the world. Brr, brr, brr was, I couldn't think of a word. So I just brr, brr, brr. <laughs> There are some terrible people on this planet. And it doesn't matter what religion they believe in or belong to. They are just terrible human beings. Just because an atheist made a paper doesn't mean that it only holds to here. It's across the board. Atheists might claim that atheism is solely about the non-existence of God, 
But that's not true. Atheism is an integrated psychology that is strongly correlated with an ultra-consequentialist ends justify the means Machiavellian morality that is hostile to all human relationships. It's I don't know a single atheist who's ever been hostile to me. What you, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know where you're getting your information from. No accident that atheists have been at the helm of the past century's most expansive and brutal social engineering projects aimed at dismantling and radically reshaping the traditional family, all in the name of the so-called greater good. Secularism institutionalizes this analytic mode of thought, indoctrinating children and adults to overcome their natural intuitions and become cold, calculating machines. It's precisely the atheistic mindset drunken with an unhinged analytic fervor that has been fueling the modernist project of hyper-consumerism and atomization that's destroying the human species by transforming us into a race of dopamine-addicted automatons. Boy, atheists have been real busy, haven't they? Inventing shit and destroying the world, apparently, is all they're good for. Shut up. This is the pill that destroys our nature and kills the soul. But we can become human once again. Boy. I think I you you I could he couldn't have been serious on some of those. He couldn't have been serious. No possible way he was serious. I've never I, I've been angry when I do some videos, but just the level of disrespect because somebody doesn't share the same religious belief as you you're calling them people who believe in incest and bestiality and they have sex with chickens really that's what we do now and I don't mean we as an I'm an atheist I mean that's what we do we just shame people and insult them because they don't believe in what you believe in really that's what that's that's cool now huh that's that's what's going on in the streets oh, okay Daniel, I got to say, you're wrong. I don't even know what part three is going to be. Part three is longer. It's going to be two videos on that, and I've got a feeling I'm going to be angry. I just don't know where what where he's getting his information from. Who, what The atheists around him must be the worst atheist on the planet. It must be some terrible human beings. And if that's true, I feel bad for him because he's got the worst of them around him and he's judging them, but he's judging everyone. I apologize for making this video so much longer, but man, I just, I felt like he was, he's attacking me. He's insulting me, the West. And I, I'm a terrible person and da da da, but I'm, I'm not an atheist, but I'm standing up for some of these people. Like they can... If they want to believe in nothing, let them believe in nothing. They're not hurting me. I've never been harmed by somebody who doesn't believe in anything. I've actually been harmed by people who believe in God. Because I don't believe in their God, I'm going to burn in hell. Getting in my face, telling me that I'm a sinner. I've never had an atheist come up and say anything negative to me. Oh, you believe in God? Well, you're going to hell. How's that work? What's that now? Never. Nothing. Never had an atheist be rude to me. Never. I'm talking phone. Shut your face. Never. Alina, I've never actually been insulted by a Muslim, though. More Christians. Some Catholic, but they weren't aggressive they were just like very kindly like yeah well you're gonna burn in hell forever you know that right and it's like oh okay well I just thought we were taking lunch but thank you for letting me know I'm gonna go have a sandwich and apparently I should do that in a I don't know some burn barrel you can go ahead and light me up while I eat <laughs> all right Anyways, I'm going to end this here. Sorry for making it so long. Sorry for the aggression. I was very angry. I'm hangry. That's what it is. I'm very hungry. 
So I'm gonna, I maybe I should eat before I do the next video. But until next time, have a good day, have a good night.